The National Lutheran Council presents Children's Chapel, a place where you can come and meet in a real way the people who live in God's Word, the Bible. Inviting you to go through the chapel doors with me. The chapel doors are open wide. It's time for us to go inside. The children's chapel where we'll sing and worship right and Boys and girls, this is your chapel. A place where you can sing, where you can pray. Here is where you meet your chapel friends, John Rydgren and Chrissy Torgerson. Let's begin chapel with a hymn today, Chrissy. How about number 41 in our children's chapel songbook, Living for Jesus? That's number 41. Remember that line from the Bible, Chrissy? Yes, John. It was after the prophet Elijah had traveled for 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness. Yes. Elijah had defeated Queen Jezebel's prophets of Baal in front of all her people. Now the people of Israel might follow the Lord instead of Baal. But Elijah had to flee into the wilderness to escape the queen's anger. But why did God ask what Elijah was doing in the wilderness? Didn't he know? Well, let's listen to our story for today, Chrissy and find out. By the time Elijah had traveled 40 days and 40 nights, he was extremely tired. He found a cave and decided to stay there for the night. He no sooner found a place to sit down when he heard the voice of God. What are you doing here, Elijah? 
Elijah wanted to hear God's voice again. Perhaps this was the time God would give him new instructions. Elijah didn't like being idle. Elijah tried not to be surprised by God's question, What are you doing here? Elijah had followed God's instructions to travel into the wilderness. Lord, I have but one thought in mind, and that is to serve you well as long as you need me, because your people have turned away from you and your promise to bless them through the children of Abraham. They have turned away from your laws and commandments. They have even thrown down your altar and killed your prophets with the sword. And now, Lord, I am the only one left, and they want to kill me. God knew that Elijah still needed encouragement and a new feeling of his power. God said to Elijah, Elijah, Elijah come, come out of the cave and stand on the mountainside before me. Of course, Elijah did what God said. And as he stood there, a gigantic wind began to tear through the hills. Elijah felt he was standing in the middle of God's power. Oh, Lord, your power is great. But I, I do not hear your voice. The wind became stronger and stronger until it reached beyond the power of a hurricane. Rocks and stones were being ripped from the mountainside. Then all was silent again. Elijah stood waiting for God's next word, but none came. Elijah was deep in wonderment and thought. What will happen now, my God? I wait only to hear you speak and command, and I will obey. What's this? The earth is shaking under my feet. The mountain is, is beginning to move and quake. Elijah was standing in the middle of an earthquake. He felt utterly helpless. There was no place for him to go. Everything was in danger of falling apart and being swallowed up by the earth. Elijah fell against the side of the mountain, his arms reaching out to hold on to the moving earth. Dear God, your power is greater than I can understand. I stand here terrified by it, yet I do not hear your voice in the quake. All was quiet again. The earth settled. Only a few stones were still rolling down the mountainside and around Elijah's feet. Lord, will you speak to me now? God was not ready to speak to Elijah just yet. Elijah must see more of his power, so that as the strain and hardship of the days ahead come to Elijah, he would never forget the power of God was on his side. Elijah was completely overwhelmed and dumbfounded at what came next. Fire. Fire is growing out of the rocks where there is nothing to burn. This is like the fire that burned away the altar on Mount Carmel. But, but now all the air and the sky is on fire. Oh, God! Will you speak to me now? God did not speak. Not yet. Then the fire disappeared, as strangely and wonderfully as it had come. Elijah was completely worn out from seeing the power of God. For a brief moment, he went inside the cave and sat down. It was then he heard a very quiet, still, small voice. Elijah. Elijah. Elijah moved toward the cave entrance. 
he could see there was a brilliant light. He knew God was going to show himself in a special way. Elijah felt he couldn't possibly look at the greatness of God and live, so he covered his face with his coat and moved out into the presence of God. He wondered if this was the way God appeared to Moses, there in the same mountain, perhaps in the same place. Now Elijah stood outside the same cave. Elijah, what are you doing here? The Lord asks me the same question as before. What can I answer him but with the same answer? Lord, I have but one concern, to serve you the best I can for as long as you need me, because I know the people of Israel have turned away from you and, and the promise you gave Abraham to bless them through his children. They have turned away from your laws and your commandments. They've thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. And now, Lord, I am the only one left, and they want to kill me. I know you wish to serve me, Elijah. I know you trust my power and my gentleness. So return now to the wilderness of Damascus. What would you have me do there? Call a new king to rule over Syria. His name is Hazael. Then you will call a new king for Israel. His name is Jehu. Is that all, my lord? No, Elijah, not all. It is also time for you to call someone to serve in your place. His name, Lord? Elisha. He shall be Elisha the prophet. You shall help him and train him. Then for a time it will be Elisha and myself, your only followers in Israel. Elisha, you are mistaken. You and Elisha are not the only believers in Israel. Certainly there are not many, but there are 7,000 who will not bow before Baal. You are not alone. Now it is time for you to leave Mount Horeb. Elijah remained kneeling until the brilliant light of God left the mountain. Then he got up and immediately started for the wilderness of Damascus. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for showing your power to Elijah in the wilderness so that all the people in your great kingdom would know of you. We pray that we might have the faith in you that Elijah had and the strength to do all that you would have us do. Amen. today. We'll be here at the same time next week to welcome you back. And as long as you're coming, why not bring a friend with you? We have a lot of room in the chapel, enough for every girl and boy you know. <laughs> Join John and Chrissy next week at the same time for another exciting story from God's Word, the Bible, on Children's Chapel, produced and transcribed for this station by the National Lutheran Council.